There's a feature of ExpressLRS that a lot of people don't know exists, and it will significantly improve your quality of life if you run analog or HD0 video transmitters. It's the ability for ExpressLRS to change your video transmitter band, channel, and power. And if you're not sure why that would improve your quality of life, I'm gonna tell you in this video. But I'm also excited to tell you that TBS, Team Black Sheep, has added a new feature to their TBS Fusion receiver module that takes this whole thing to the next level. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Let's start with a demonstration of how this feature works. Uh, here I've got a tiny whoop, and it's got an analog video transmitter in it. And here in my ExpressLRS radio, I'm going to run the ExpressLRS Lewis script, and I'm gonna to go to a section that many people have never explored. It is the VTX administrator section, VTX admin. And if you go there, you see that you have the option to select a band, channel, and power level. And if I change that setting and then hit send VTX, watch what happens here on my spectrum analyzer. Boom. Do you see that it moved? It moved channels. You can see that now it's on channel race one. And if we go into Betaflight and we go to the video transmitter tab, here's the old information. But if we click away and click back, we can see that the flight controller has been updated with the new information. And that's nice because there have been methods in the past for remote controlling a video transmitter and there have been issues with conflicts. The, the receiver is telling the video transmitter to go to one channel, the flight controller wants it on another channel, and there's no way to figure out who's gonna be in charge. The way that ExpressLRS has done this is really clever because rather than the receiver telling the video transmitter what channel it should be on, the receiver talks to the flight controller, the flight controller talks to the VTX, and everybody is on the same page. So for example, if I go into the video transmitter tab and I change the channel to channel eight and power 25, I can hit save that and you'll see here, wait for it, it's moved. Now it's back on channel race eight. Everybody is in agreement, everybody's working together. And no matter how you change the channel, whether you change it via the ExpressLRS Lewis script, whether you change it via your Goggle OSD menu, whether you change it via the video transmitter tab in Betaflight Configurator, no matter how you do it, everybody is on the same page. You can use whichever of those methods you prefer. So why is the ExpressLRS method actually better and in some cases worse. In fact, there's a gotcha with the ExpressLRS method that will make you think that your video transmitter is completely broken and it's actually a feature, a benefit that you didn't know you were getting or maybe you don't even want it. See, here's the thing. Right now, I can change whatever I want here in this menu and nothing will happen until I hit the send VTX option. That menu is not updated in real time, but that send VTX function also happens when the quadcopter first powers up. So for example, let me set this to channel race eight and I'm gonna hit save. Oh yeah, no, it's already on channel race eight. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power the video transmitter down and I'm gonna power it back up again. Watch the spectrum analyzer. Well, I can't quite figure out why this isn't working the way that I remember it working. I am under the impression that when the Express LRS receiver first makes a connection, it also sends the VTX settings. And the advantage of that is that you can make this change here in the Express LRS Lewis script, and then every one of your quadcopters that you power up instantly will go to the channel that you've got it set to. You don't have to worry about powering up on the wrong channel. Well. Very briefly, maybe it'll power up on the wrong channel and then it'll quickly jump to the right channel. Uh, and you don't have to worry about every time you switch to a new quadcopter, changing it to whatever channel you happen to be on. You just make that setting here and then it persists across every quadcopter that you power up. It's, it's not doing it though. Send VTX. So then what if I do race eight and then power down And then do send VTX. Yeah, okay, it lost connection. So it can't send anything. Now if I power up, will it jump to race eight? It did, it worked correctly that time. I think what I was missing is that you have to hit the send VTX option, even if the quadcopter is powered down every time you make a change to the menu or the Express LRS system doesn't perceive that the channel has changed. So let's try this again. I'm powered down, I arrive at the flying field. The race director says, you're gonna be on race one today. So I go into my radio and I change myself to 
uh, oh, power level one. So we're at 25 milliwatts. I change myself to race one. And then, very important, I send VTX. Even though the receiver's powered down, I hit send VTX. So then I get my first quadcopter. I'm going to my first heat. I power up. I don't even think about what channel I'm on. Boom. I power up. And boom. Just like I want, I'm on race one. That's pretty freaking cool if you've got a bunch of quadcopters and you don't want to be fooling around with your channels all day. But there's a problem. If you make this change and you forget that you did it, every quadcopter you power up is gonna be on race one. And you're gonna be like, what's wrong with all my quadcopters? And you're gonna go and you're gonna like maybe change them to race eight, but then as soon as you power it up again, boom, it's on race one. Because the Expresso Lewis Lewis script is, is overriding them every time they power up. So if you make these changes, don't forget that you did it. And if one day somebody hands you their quadcopter and they say, it's the weirdest thing, every quadcopter that I connect to this radio goes to race one and I can't get it off race one, that's why. So how do you disable this if you wanted to disable this? The way that you disable it is you go and you set the band to off. I don't think the power level matters and the channel, you can't set the channel disabled, it's gotta be a number. You set that band to off and then this VTX admin function is disabled, and then the flight controller, which is do all the other ways that you normally would do. I also wanna point out to you that the power level, the power level is a little weird. It doesn't say 25 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, whatever. It just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. You just pick a number. And what you need to do is you need to go into the video transmitter tab, and you can see here we have power levels, one, two, three, four, five. So whatever power level you set will depend on what's in the video transmitter tab. And there's, you just have to know that number and remember that number. So that's a little confusing and a little awkward because if you have multiple quadcopters with different video transmitters, well, on some of them, power level one might be pit mode. And on some of them, power level one might be 25 milliwatts. There may be some inconsistencies there that you have to deal with. You can always just set the power level to dash and then the quadcopter will stay at whatever power level it was at previously and you'll only change the band and the channel. I'm gonna show you the bonus thing that TBS has done with their Fusion module uh, in just a second. But before I do, I wanna show you, there are some prerequisites for this to work. And if you don't meet those prerequisites, it's not gonna work, you're gonna be super annoyed. The first one is, obviously, you have to be using Express LRS. And I know that there's a firmware version where they introduced this feature, I don't remember what it is. I'm on 3.3, if you're not on at least 3.3, then, like I, maybe it works in 3.0, I'm not sure. If it doesn't work for you and you're on an older version of ExpressLRS, update to the latest. It's always a good idea when you've got a feature that's not working. The other thing you need is you have to have Smart Audio or MSP DisplayPort or IRC Tramp as a peripheral here. And that's gonna work for you if you've got any analog video transmitter because they all support Smart Audio or Tramp Telemetry today or HD0 video transmitters will also work with it, but not any digital video transmitters uh, that I'm aware of. HD0 is digital, you know what I meant. Uh, the other thing you need is in your video transmitter tab, you need to have device ready equals true, meaning that your flight controller is talking to your video transmitter, and you need to have a VTX table loaded, and you need to be able to use this, this tab to change the settings of the video transmitter. So if the Lewis script isn't working, come to the video transmitter tab and test it out. And if that's not working, then you have a problem with your flight controller and your video transmitter, but your express alert system isn't to blame. The final thing you need, and this tricked me at the beginning of this video, it wasn't working and I was like, ah, why isn't it working? You have to go to the receiver tab and you must have telemetry turned on. If telemetry is turned off, or if for some reason you only wired up the RX pad of your receiver and not the TX pad, so you're not getting telemetry, you have to have bi-directional telemetry communication. So you have to have both TX and RX wired up and you have to have telemetry enabled for this to work. If you meet those prerequisites, this should work. So now let me tell you about the cool thing that TBS did just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me Subscribe to me for uh, as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. Just take whatever value you feel like you get from videos like this where I teach you about stuff you didn't know existed, new features, things that make your life better, help you solve problems, maybe help you buy a product or maybe not buy a product. 
that would make you happy or maybe make you unhappy. Whatever value you get out of my content, think about if I was busking on the subway, how much would you throw into my hat? And whatever that number is, head on down to the link in the video description and subscribe as a patron. I would love to have you as a supporter. Uh, if today's not the day and you're just like, no, I'm not gonna just watch the video. I've already fast forwarded this. That's cool. I'm gonna keep making the content. You keep watching the content and uh, hopefully that day will come. The first thing I'm gonna have to do is update the firmware. It's gotta be on the latest firmware for the Fusion. Real quick, if you don't know how to do that, we're gonna plug USB into the Fusion. Ooh, USB micro, how quaint. And then we're gonna to go to TBS Agent Web on the web. This is the TBS firmware updater. Uh, and uh, you're gonna need a login. I'm already logged in, it's remembered me. Uh, and I'm gonna hit link USB device. I should see TBS Fusion in that list. So I'll click on that and connect. And then I'll click on the Fusion module and I'll go down to firmware. And uh, we are on uh, 221. We wanna be on 239. Update to 239. Yes, okay. During the firmware update, you will get a disconnected sound like you just heard, and the link USB device will appear again, and you'll just need to relink it each time. By the way, you also have to be using Chrome browser. I'm, this may work with other Chromium-based browsers, but I think a lot of them, you actually have to be using Chrome. I'm pretty sure Firefox won't work. The next thing I need to do is update the TBS Fusion Wi-Fi subsystem. And I'm not gonna do that here through TBS Agent, not quite. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure in settings that Wi-Fi is on on the module. It is on by default. And then on my computer, I'm gonna connect to the TBS Fusion Wi-Fi network. And then there is no password on that by default. You can just connect. After I connect to the Wi-Fi, I'm gonna open up my web browser and go to 192.168.4.1 and hit upgrade. Then I'm gonna get this zip file, which contains the TBS Cloud activation, uh, and I want the activation for 300. I've got a link to where you can download that zip file in the video description below. So we'll go here and Tracer Tango Mambo Fusion. That's presumably what we want, so let's just put that in our downloads folder. Let's just grab this Fusion file, drop it in the downloads folder and choose file and upgrade. Now that we're on the right firmware, we're gonna reconnect to the TBS Fusion module and we're gonna go to Fusion Wi-Fi. Then we're gonna go to the pro setting and we are going to enable the Express LRS backpack. And then here where it says ELRS phrase, we're gonna put our Express LRS binding phrase. I'm not gonna show you what mine is, but you're gonna type your binding phrase there. I don't know why this is like this. It's only taking keystrokes like, it must be sending the keystrokes to the module one at a time instead of caching them. Yeah, because there's no save button, so it's just sending them as we go. But by the way, you will need to have a binding phrase. If you've been doing binding without a binding phrase, just by clicking the bind button or something, you're gonna have to assign a manual bind phrase, sorry. You should also know that you need the Wi-Fi AP enabled here in the Fusion Wi-Fi. I think that's the same option as Wi-Fi on in the menu. Let's just double check that. It is not. I don't know what the difference is between them, but you need Wi-Fi AP enable as well, or this won't work. Now that you've got all the setup done, let's actually freaking use it. And the first thing I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna set VTX sync to follow. And here's how that's gonna work. Here in the VTX administrator screen of my Express Sellers Lua script, I'm gonna change the band and channel and hit send VTX. Now watch right here. Boom. The module has followed the change that was made to the video transmitter on the quad. And if I go into Betaflight Configurator, Video Transmitter tab, Race Band 8. Okay, let's try it again. Channel, Race Band 5. Send VTX. Race 5. And if I click off and come back to the screen, Race 5. Everybody is synced up. It's amazing. But what if I want to go the other way? What if I don't want to have to do all this nonsense with my radio master in order to change channel? What if I want to change channel directly from the goggle module? No problem. To do that, I'm going to set the VTX sync to lead back here on the main screen. Let's change the channel, race eight. And then nothing's happened yet. The goggles are on race eight, but the VTX is still back on race five. I'm going to long click and Send to VTX. 
And then here in Betaflight, race eight, it's updated. Amazing. Race two, long click. Oh, long click. There we go. And send to VTX. Race two. And flight controls on race two. That's pretty freaking cool. I got to tell you. Because there's so much BS involved in changing your band and channel. Sticks and menus and all that nonsense here. Just ding, 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 ding. Click. Done. It's pretty freaking cool. Now, I am curious if that change is getting propagated back through the Lua script. So, like, here in the Lua script, if I go to V... Let's just restart the Lua script entirely, just to check. So, we'll do Express LRS, Lua script... VTX admin. Oh, yeah, it did. See, it had said race five until I restarted the Lua script and it reloaded. So that change is also getting pushed to the module. That means that if I use the TBS Fusion to put my system on race two, the next quadcopter that I power up will also be on race two. That is real freaking slick. I got to say, I'm more impressed with that than I thought I was going to be. That's real freaking slick. There are going to be people who say that I and TBS are late to the ELRS backpack party. ELRS backpacks have existed for a long time. And like, for example, HC Zero goggles, they have an ELRS backpack in them already. You could be doing this right now with your HC Zero goggles and your HC Zero video transmitters. And you should be because that's pretty freaking cool. Um, you could actually even solder on an ELRS backpack to a TBS rapid fire module. It doesn't come with a backpack, but you can always add one aftermarket, although it's kind of a pain in the ass to do. I don't think you should. What you should do is you should get something that already has the backpack built in, like the TBS Fusion, like the HD Zero goggles. I'm pretty sure the SkyZone module has it, and then you could be taking advantage of this functionality, but only if you're using Express LRS, except wait. If you're using TBS Crossfire, you could be doing the same thing. And actually, this has existed for since before Express LRS was even a thing. And if you're one of the people out there who uses Immersion RC Ghost, well, you actually probably know already because this is a, like a key reason why people choose Ghost, but you could be doing the same thing as well. And I made a video where I show you how to make it work. I'll put a, a card to that and a link in the video description below. If you're not using ExpressLRS or you just want to see how those systems have implemented it, there's the video. I'll see you there.